Hi everyone, my name is Xavier and in this video we'll be taking a look at how you can use the observer pattern in TypeScript. So what is this pattern about? Well, often when one part of your application changes, other parts need to be updated. This is the kind of problem that you can solve with the observer pattern. Now, if you have already developed a web application, then you probably already know this pattern. You've probably used onClick or onChangeHandlers to detect when a user clicks on something or when he changes some text in a form. In this video, we'll take a look at how you can implement the observer pattern yourself. So let's get started. Okay, so here I am in Visual Studio Code and in this video, we're gonna write a weather station. So I've already set up a weather station class and a temperature display class. Now it's pretty obvious that the temperature display should update every time that the weather station uh, records a new temperature. So the weather station has a private attribute temperature, which is of course a number, and then it has a set method for temperature, and then it just outputs to the log weather station new temperature measured, and then it outputs the temperature, and then it also sets the temperature attribute. So that's pretty simple. Now in this example, we call the weather station a subject because other classes can monitor that class. And we call the temperature display an observer because that one observes another object. Temperature display observes changes in the weather station. So we're going to start by creating two interfaces for subject and observers. So I'm going to create one for subject. And I'm also going to create one for observer. Now a subject needs three methods. The first one is register observer and we're going to get an observer object in here. What this allows us to do is it allows our temperature display, for example, to register itself as an observer with the weather station. So the weather station then knows that it should notify the temperature display of any changes. We're also going to create a method remove observer just in case that we want to stop being notified of changes in the temperature. And then we're going to create a method notify observers because if a change happens in our subject, it should notify all its observers. Okay, so that's it for subject. Let's now move over to observer. This one should have only one method and that's update. And in our case, when we update, we will pass along the temperature to a subject. So if the temperature changes in the weather station, it will call the update method on an observer class and pass along the temperature. So let's now implement these interfaces. So I'm going to say that the weather station implements the subject. And this is going to throw an error because I have three methods that I need to implement. So I'm going to say implement missing methods. There we go. So here we've got register observer, remove observer, and notify observer. So we're going to implement them one by one. The first one is register observer. Now what we want to do here is we want to keep track of this observer that we get here as a parameter. So I'm going to create a new private attribute for our weather station. I'm going to call this observers. And this is going to be an array of observer objects. And I'm going to initialize it as an empty array. So when someone wants to be notified of changes in our weather station, well, then he calls the register observer with a reference to himself. And all that we're going to do is we're going to say this dot observers dot push. Oh, so we're going to keep track of this observer. That's everything that the register observer method should do. Now let's do the remove observer. If someone wants to be removed as an observer, well, then we first have to look where he's positioned in our array. So we're going to fetch the index by saying this dot observers dot index of O. So we're going to look up where he is in our array. And when we know his location, then we're going to say this dot observers dot splice. And we're going to take away the element at the index. So that's the remove observer method still pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We're just manipulating uh, an array here. Now comes the notify observers. Every time that something changes in our weather station, we should notify all of our observers. So we'll need a for loop. 
So we're going to iterate over all the observers. So I'm going to say observer of this dot observers. Just loop over them. And we're going to call the update method on each observer and we're going to give it our current temperature. Okay, so that's it. There's just one more thing that we need to do. Every time that our temperature changes, we're going to call the set temperature method. And then we also want to notify our observers. So we're just going to say notify. We're going to say this dot notify observer. And actually, let's let's make this plural because there could be multiple notify observers. There we go. And also going to change it here in the interface. Okay, so that's everything that we need to do in our weather station. Now we can go and implement our observer. So in this case, we have temperature display, we're going to say that this implements the observer interface, then it's going to complain again, because I need to implement uh, some methods, there we go. And temperature display has only one method, and that's update. Um, so whenever the temperature updates, uh, we want to do some logic in here, but I'm just going to fake some logic, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to log something to the console. I'm going to say temperature display. I need to update my display, for example. Right, and then your logic would go here. Now that's not enough. We need to actually say to the weather station that our temperature display wants to be notified of changes. So let's do that right now. Let's create a private attribute here. We're going to say that we observe a subject should be of the type subject. And we're also going to create a constructor in which we're going to receive the weather station, which is a subject. And we're just going to keep track of this subject. So we're going to say this subject equals the weather station. And then we're going to register ourselves with the weather station. So we're going to say weather station dot register observer, and we're going to register ourselves as an observer because our temperature display wants to know when changes happen to the temperature. Okay, so that's it for the temperature display. Let's now create another observer. This is the beauty of this pattern, you can have many observers that will be notified when a single element in your code base changes, in this case, it's our weather station. So let's say I also want to have a fan. So I'm going to copy paste the temperature display. I'm going to create a class fan, I'm going to leave the private attribute here intact, I'm also going to leave the constructor as is. And then we're going to change uh, the update method. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write some logic in here. What I want is I want the fan to automatically turn on when the temperature is above 25 degrees Celsius, for example. So here I'm going to say, well, if the temperature is higher than 25 Celsius, then we need to turn on the fan, for example, so we're going to say, uh, it's hot here, turning myself on. And then you obviously here you want some real logic, not just the console log. And if it's colder than that, we're going to say fan, it's nice and cool. And we're going to turn myself off. There we go. And again, here should come some uh, some real logic and not just a console lock. Okay, so that's it. Now, how do you use the observer pattern? Well, you just create instances and pass references along. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our own weather station. So we're going to say new weather station. There we go. And then we're going to create an instance of our temperature display. We're going to say new temperature display. And we're going to give it our weather station so it can ask the weather station to be kept in the loop. We're going to do the same for the fan. So we're going to say fan is new fan. And we're also going to give it a reference to the weather station. There we go. And now we're going to play with it a bit. So we're going to say weather station, we're going to simulate a temperature change. So we're going to say that the temperature is now 20 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to duplicate this line. And after a while, we're going to say, Oh, the temperature rises to, for example, 30 degrees. Okay, let's now take a look at what will happen. So I'm going to run the TypeScript compiler to compile this to JavaScript. And then I'm going to run it in node to see the output. 
Now, as you can see, when I say set temperature 20, our weather station says the new temperature measurement is 20. And immediately followed by that, the temperature display is gonna say, oh, I need to update my display. And the fan will say, it's nice and cool. I can turn myself off. That's exactly what we want. We made a change to our weather station and it automatically notified all of the observers that are subscribed to changes in the weather station. So when we set the temperature to 30, the weather station does the same thing. It says that the new temperature measurement is 30 degrees and this triggers the temperature display and the fan to update themselves. So the temperature display now says, well, I need to update my, my display. And the fan says, ooh, it's hot here. I'm gonna turn myself on. So this is a simple example of how you can use the observer pattern. So let's quickly recap in what we have learned in this video. This is the UML diagram for the observer pattern. And as you can see, we have an interface for an observer and we have an interface for subject. Then we create concrete observers that have the notify method. In our case, that was the fan and the temperature display. On the subject side, we also create a concrete subject, although that's not shown here on the UML. And that one is responsible for keeping track of all the observers. So it has register observer, unregister observer and notify observers. And you can also see that whenever you call the notify observers method, it should run over all of its observers and call the notify function on each and every one of them. So that was it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out a lot. If you want to learn more about TypeScript or TypeScript design patterns, check out the next videos in these series.